Guys, welcome to another video on the Inside Spurs channel. Happy Tuesday, late afternoon, early evening, depending on when you're watching this. I hope you've had a good day. I hope you looked after yourself, whatever it is to say. It was work, I hope it was good. If it wasn't good, don't worry. There's always tomorrow. Obviously, if you had the day off, you're lucky. You're lucky and count those lucky stars, but you've earned it anyway. In this video, we're talking a little bit around Bournemouth striker Dominic Solanke and Spurs' interest in the English striker, as well as a little bit, little bit of new interest in Leipzig's defender Mohamed Simakan. So talking a little bit about both of the two, give me some facts, figures, all that jazz. You know what I always do. Obviously, if you are new, give us a subscribe. You're very much welcome to join us for the journey. And let me start with Dominic Solanke, okay? So this came from Eric Conner, who said that uh, Tottenham could make a move for Bournemouth stri English striker Dominic Solanke to replace German striker Timo Werner. Premier League Giants are interested in the 26-year-old player. Now, look, if I'm honest, I I I don't think it's a replacement for, um, for Timo Werner because I think you know, Timo's a, a left winger. Dominic Solanke is, is a striker. Now, the way I would look at this is... If they moved off of Richarlison, do they go here? Because we've talked about Santiago Jimenez, we've talked about Ivan Tony, we've talked about Albert Gummonson. We, you know, we talked about a lot. Obviously, I did a video earlier, loan roundup, talked about Gummonson, talked about Antonio Nusa. So go back have a watch if you haven't seen it. But on Slanky, I think it would be dependent if um, if Richarlison moved. Genuinely, now some people may not see. Uh, a Solanke is a big enough upgrade. Some people may, potentially. I mean, I'm going to go through some facts and figures to see what you guys think of him before I give my opinion. But look, to let you know, he's 26 years old. He'll be 27 base kit at start of next season because he's born in September. His contract expires in the summer of 2027. I mean, this season, he's played uh, in the Premier League 31 times, scoring 16, assisting three. So 19 goal contributions and 31 for a team who is in the bottom half of the table. Um, in all competitions, 35 games, 18 goals, 4 assists, 22 goal contributions, just short of 3,000 minutes. Now, look, I'm going to be honest, those stats may not look crazy good, right? You may sit there and go, God, he's only got 16 goals. He's averaging one every two games. You do need to remember who he plays for. He plays for a team who are, what, 12th, 13th, 14th in the league, somewhere in that realm. Obviously, survival has already been pretty much guaranteed for those guys down there. I like Dominic Solanke. I do. I think he would do well in the system in terms of you know the high press, the ability to really use the pace that he has, and he does have that. And he, you know, he's a fairly tall striker. I mean, he's what six one, six two, something like that. Physical can handle it. I mean, he's had forty two percent goal participation for Bournemouth this season. I, I'm only intrigued by this deal, by how much it would cost. You know, we would want to move off of Richardson for somewhere between 40 and 50 million, right? Because we're going to want to get our money back. Not my words, it's the club's words from previous windows. I think Bournemouth would want 50 to 60 million for Slanky. I think they'll look at Ivan Tony and go, right, he's only one year left on his deal, but he's also 28. We've got a guy who's 26 in contract, who's had the season that Ivan Tony, you know, wanted to have in terms of scoring the goals, but obviously didn't because he was suspended. I just think they're going to want big money. I don't think Spurs are going to do it. I don't. I think Spurs are probably going to try and maybe hold on to a Charleston for another year and then maybe look at the striker position the following summer once they've sorted midfield and centre half and the, you know maybe sorted the wing. Maybe I don't know because you're not going. We're not going to be buying eight or nine players this summer like we. You know, we do need to kind of have awareness that we're going to look at a winger, we're going to look at a midfielder, we're looking at centre-half, we're looking at those three positions first and foremost, then we look at maybe a full-back or two, you know, or a full-back that's going to play both sides even, you know. So I don't see it happening personally. I don't. I could be wrong. I could be absolutely full of it, but I don't see it happening. Uh, looking at the report on Mohamed Simakan, so it came from... Uh, Sky Sports Deutschland and, and Florian Plettenberg has talked about it as well. He said that uh, the release clause of Mohamed Simikan's contract is valid from this summer, value in the region of 70 million euros. Simikan is open and ready for a transfer. The Premier League appeals to him, but would only leave if he can take the next step. Spurs and Newcastle are interested. Uh, uh, Leipzig are relaxed and in a good position due to the high sum. So, again, let's talk about who Simikan is before you 
shoot it down or you love him or you hate him, okay? So looking at Mohamed Simakan, we've got a player who is 23. He'll be turning 24 next month in just short of a month, May 3rd. And he's a centre-half that can play right back as well in summer of 2027 is when his contract expires. Uh, this season, he's played in 37 games across the Bundesliga, the Champions League, the DFB Pokal, and the DFL Super Cup. Uh, he scored two goals, getting two assists, so predominantly more base at centre-half than he is at right-back, but obviously he can do a shift there if necessary. Um, right. 70 million euros is the early 60 million pound mark, okay? So let's take that into account first and foremost. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I'm not gonna sit here and be like, oh maybe we could do that. No, we're not gonna do that. Newcastle wouldn't do that. Newcastle, I think, are looking at it going, look, we can spend money. We've got loads of it to spend. We've got all the money in the world, but we are restricted, so we need to be smarter of how we spend it. You know, Man City didn't go from one from you know, you know, a, 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 a NAF club, a rocket to the Premier League. They spent years getting there. Now, yes, they did some dodgy things in the meantime, but Newcastle need to look at how they did it and go. We need to build the club, and every year just get that little bit better. Because what New Man City did, they didn't just jump from you know being seventeenth to the top. They jumped sort of mid-table, that sort of 7th, 8th position, that 5th, 4th, and then onwards, you know. So Newcastle went to it. 17 million euros is a lot. It's a lot of money. It really is. And they have spent that money before. We really haven't. I like Simicam. He's a modern-day centre-half. You know, he's an athlete. He's decent in the air. He's good on the ball. But Spurs can look for something similar for cheaper allowing them to go elsewhere. And that's the way they will go. They'll look for the cheaper option than the ready-made option. We know that's what Spurs do the majority of the time, you know, barring your, your Madisons and so forth. I've always said I think they'll go Lloyd Kelly from Bournemouth on a free. I always think they would. It's not to say that I would want him. Hell, I, I would want I'd want Virgil van Dijk, but that's, that's not going to happen. I'm trying to, as much as I give you this information, I try and give you the way I think Spurs will look at it. And I think Spurs will look at it with... Well, if we get Lloyd Kelly, he's prem proven, mid twenties, athletic, can play the system, good on the ball, English and free. That helps our homegrown, right? They'll look at it like that. That would allow us to go elsewhere. Now they may also look at it and go that that allows us not to spend money and more money for us. But you know, and by comments are putting feet to fire. Now will that continue? We'll see. We'll take him on his word. But that might allow them to go and get a fullback. That might allow them to go and get a backup goalkeeper. And a lot of us have been talking about it. In this community, we're, we're, we're great for it. We talk about the fact that we do need a fullback. We do need backup goalkeepers. It's not always about we need the marquee winger. Because we do need that. But we have so many other holes that we still need to fill. And, and we've been great on this channel to kind of say, these are the other holes. Why do we not talk about these? Why is there not enough you know, energy being put into these positions? And I think it's one thing that we do need to be better at is, is saying, look, we... Fraser Force is great, and I think Fraser Force as a third goalkeeper, I'm all for because he's homegrown, he's good experience, good in the locker room. You know, the big clubs do that. Look at Man City with Scott Carson. They do that. They did it with Richard Wright. I I'd like that, and I'd like then a younger guy to come in because you think Vic Vic is young in terms of goalkeeper age, right? He's in his mid twenties. But if you can bring someone in, maybe if it is, you know, a Whiteman or an Austin that you kind of go, no, we like those guys. That they're, they're good. Fine, fine. Maybe it's Joshua Keeley at Barnet. But if not, go and get a guy. I could be wrong and we have him, but if not, go and get him. Bleed him in, slowly but surely. The odd Carling Cup, oh, EFL Cup. The odd FA Cup game here and there, you know. Blend, sort of just bleeding him in, slowly but surely, and allowing him to develop. But we shall see. But anyway, guys, in the video, I hope you did enjoy it. Drop a like on the video. If you did, hit me in the comments section down there. Just there, all right? You can't see it, but it's off the sort of, I can hold it here. Um, your thoughts and feelings about Mohamed Simakan, you know, would you want Spurs to go for him? If you think we're going for him, how much he might cost? If not, where do you think we go and, and, and what would you want? Obviously, your thoughts and feelings about Dominic Solanke as well. Obviously, subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit the bell notification for more. But anyway, guys, it's the end of the video, and I'll see you all very, very soon. Take care, guys.